Welcome to my quick review of the Steam version of Crimson Clover World Explosion. It seems to be an annual event now that we get a new version of Crimson Clover each year. Last year we had the Nintendo Switch version. This year we have the Steam version. Maybe next year we have the PS4 and Xbox version. Who knows? But as cool as the Nintendo Switch version was, and as fun as it is to play in handheld mode, I know a lot of players, myself included, have been really looking forward to the PC version of the game because a lot of us prefer to play on PC because of the better technical performance, lower input lag, smoother frame rates, higher resolution, G-Sync support, all that sort of fun stuff. And so the question of today's video isn't, is Crimson Clover World Explosion a great game? I think we all already know that it is a great game and if you want a real in-depth breakdown of that, definitely check out my previous video on the Nintendo Switch version of the game. So today we're mostly focusing on the technical side of things when it comes to the Steam version of Crimson Clover. And for those who do not know, Crimson Clover actually has a pretty interesting development history. So originally it was created in about 2010 or so by a famous super player, Clover Tack, who is an absolute beast who holds world records in various cave games, including Dodonpachi. He also worked on the PS2 version of Dodonpachi Daiojo, which is a classic. Definitely check out my video on that as well. And so this guy has a real great pedigree, and so he made his own shmup in about 2010, and it came out on the Nesica arcade machine. It also came out in this interesting Dojin release. And I don't know if you can still get copies of the Dojin release, but I think it would be cool to have as a collector. But the version I think most of us are aware of and were introduced to is the original Steam version of the game, Crimson Clover World Ignition. What's really cool about World Ignition, looking back on it, is that it received a surprising amount of hype when it first came out. It got covered by a ton of different outlets. Bigger YouTubers like Total Biscuit covered the game and talked about it, which is pretty crazy looking back on now, and I sort of miss that era of YouTube. But anyway, so it came out on PC as Crimson Clover World Ignition, and as cool as that release was, it wasn't exactly perfect in terms of technical performance. So it had a few issues that a lot of us have sort of noticed over the years. The first and biggest one was that the original version of Crimson Clover World Ignition had this nasty memory leak where if you left the game running for too long, maybe you had it minimized in the background or you're just playing for hours and hours, you notice that after a while the frame rate would start to get real choppy and the performance would get really bad and you'd be like, what the hell is going on? You'd close the game, you restart it, it wouldn't help. In fact, the only way to fix it, so to say, was to reboot your computer entirely. And so that made streaming the game kind of a pain in the butt and also just grinding out runs. And I don't think that memory leak was actually ever fixed. But on top of the memory leak, there were a few other technical things that I noticed. For example, textures of Crimson Clover World Ignition were surprisingly noisy. I remember patoing pointing this out to me when we were discussing the game and he's sending me some pictures showing the textures and there's just a lot of grain going on with them and it gave the game a little bit of a lo-fi look and so I think a lot of people when they talked about the screen looking way too busy of course there's a lot going on with the metals and bullets and explosions but I also think the noisy textures weren't the best and then finally another issue I had with the ignition version of the game was the input lag. Now it wasn't severe or anything like that. We're not talking about cotton to 11 frames or anything, but I think it sort of landed to about three and a half to four frames, even with V-Sync off. And that seemed a little bit excessive for a Steam Shmup. Most Steam Shmups land about three to two and a half frames. So it had a bit of an extra frame of lag 
in there. Again, it wasn't breaking or anything like that, but it was a little bit annoying to me. So coming into this re-release of Crimson Clover World Explosion, the thing we're going to keep our eye out for is, is the memory leak fixed? Is the frame rate smooth? How did they upgrade the textures? And of course, all the new extra modes. And of course, the big question, the input lag. So let's begin by talking about the memory leak. So I played this game for hours and hours. I left it running. I didn't come across any sort of memory leak. I didn't come across any sort of slowdown, frame rate issues. In fact, you'll see the background footage of today's video is me playing a range unlimited mode, which is absolutely insane with the amount of stuff going on on screen. You notice the frame rate is buttery smooth. It never dropped below 60. I have a little display on my monitor that shows me the frame rate of everything in real time. And that thing sat on 60 nonstop. And so performance wise, I am not seeing any problems at all. The game seems to be very well optimized, very rock solid there. So then the next question, the textures. This is something I pointed out in the original Nintendo Switch review, but I really like the improvement to the textures. They're cleaner. They look better, it's easier to track the screen, brighter, more vivid. Also, I redid some of the models a little bit, added in some extra ship colors, which I think more shmup should do. So all excellent stuff there. So on a great track. Then the question of the input lag. Is it higher? Is it lower? Should you uninstall this and reinstall World Ignition? No. So what's really cool and what really surprised me is how responsive this game is input lag wise. And in fact, it is one of the most responsive shmups I have seen in a very long time released on Steam. It is coming out at a solid two frames of input lag. That's basically ideal. That's basically perfect. One frame of input lag is actually crazy and I've only seen it on RetroArt, but two frames of input lag, really solid there. So I'm very happy to say in terms of technical performance, the game gets the Electric Underground stamp of approval, a big upgrade and definitely worth the money. And so another question that I had coming into this was going to be the pricing model of Crimson Clover World Explosion, because this was going to be very interesting. For those who are not around, Crimson Clover World Ignition had a real history of being sold at really, really low prices. You'd see the game on sale all the time for two dollars to three dollars it was easy to pick up at a low price and most shmup players that i know actually already own the world ignition version of the game and in fact to celebrate the first year of the electric underground i tried to do a giveaway where i gave away a bunch of copies of crimson clover world ignition because it is one of the best shmups on steam but because it was so low priced and so many people already bought it actually it was very difficult to find people who didn't have a copy so what's really cool is that if you already own the World Ignition version of the game, I believe you can upgrade for $9. That's what I paid at least. And I think a $9 upgrade is absolutely worth it. Do not hesitate. Do it. Buy it. And I think you combined everything together. So you have the excellent performance. You have all the awesome stuff that was already in the game. And then on top of that, you have the arrange mode. Now, I do want to end this review by talking a little bit about the range mode because at first when you look at it, you think, oh, okay, a range mode, that sounds fun. That sounds cool, right? But actually, I think they should have renamed this to maybe something a bit bigger, like a black label or something, because on top of just having one arrange, you basically get four gameplay modes in a range. So you get Arrange Original, you get Arrange Unlimited, that's what you're seeing on screen here, and I came so close to the 1cc. And then you get Arrange Boost, which is crazy and a lot of fun. So when you just list out all the content this game has on offer, which was the Novice Mode, all the versions of Novice, the Arcade Mode, all the versions of Arcade, and then Arrange Mode and all the versions of Arrange, this, in my opinion, is the best shmup on Steam right now. It is an absolute must purchase. I could not recommend it enough. And the range mode is easily one of my favorite ranges of all time. This mode is super cool and it's crazy how much crap is going on on screen and I cannot get enough of it. It is some of the most fun I've had playing a shmup in a very long time. So definitely check it out. Adios everyone.
So thank you to the $5 patrons, 100, 100, Dingo, Another Joe, Anthony A, Aaron Iodice, Aaron Solis, Ben, Blur, STG, Borgie, 22, Brian Reboot, Brian Shiver, Chris Yusufovich, Chronic Burnout 3, Corey Mark, Daniel Savage, Darren Griffin, Delta Tango 6, Disco Star Slayer, DJ420, Praise It, Dubs, Entropy, Eric H, FCK, Full Set, Retro Schmupper, Haosu, Ilya, Kiwi, JLab, JB, RPG, Joe Angelo, John Kelly, Game Boy Guru, K, K2, Kiko Man 589 Larage, Malaise, Mark Toms, Maz, Megadeth, Minung, Mechalin, Mitch LY, Queen Charlene, Nathaniel Davis, and Electron, Neon Dagger Games, Okla Kugels, Philip Mason, Portal 63, Rattlecat, Raul, Real Skeen, Riff Mason, Shane Sinsensky, SLW, The Boot Rex, The Real Ikuzo, The Dirty Screech, The Old Bensta, TRM, Sugumo, Twilight EX, Plasmo, and Yutsukaya. Thanks for watching.